Hi, I'm Luke. I'm David. And today we're going to talk to you about our new game, Swords and Strongholds. It's a two-player game of mouse strategy. It plays in about 15 to 30 minutes. And it comes straight from the pages of Mouse Guard, where you can see the characters playing this game in the taverns and inns of the Mouse Guard comics. Uh, and today we're going to run through uh, the basic setup, the rules, uh, and some exceptions and clarifications. All right, Swords and Strongholds, two-player light strategy game. Takes 15 to 30 minutes to play, depending on your skill. On your turn in Swords and Strongholds, you will use one of your mice to make a regular move uh, along one of the intersections, uh, forward, back, left, or right. Uh, you cannot move to the board edge, and you cannot move into another pawn. Uh, you may, on your turn, you don't have to, but you may, if you so desire, you may play a uh, card and in this case David's going to play a stronghold card, which is one of the three types of cards in the game uh, Stronghold allows you to occupy one of the four squares adjacent to your mice uh, To your the mouse rather once you're in the center of that square um, You cannot be pushed out by a sword or stronghold which we'll explain in a moment uh, and neither can anyone move uh, On any of those four corners not my pawns or David's pawns David's drawing another card because when you play a card you draw a card uh, on my turn, I'm going to advance this one pawn. I can only move forward, it can't move back, left or right. And in this case, I'm gonna play a Diplomacy card. And Diplomacy attacks the nearest opposing mouse. So you count by squares, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I choose here uh, which mouse I will target. And if I target the Stronghold mouse, then I use my sweet Diplomacy words to coax them out of the Stronghold, and then I choose where uh, that mouse goes uh, on one of the four adjacent corners so I could put the mouse there and make it very vulnerable to a follow-up attack uh, Being near the board edge as you will see is dangerous in Swords and Strongholds or I can use diplomacy on a mouse that's not in a stronghold and swap Places with that mouse. It's a very spectacular attack. And then I would draw a card uh, However, this is a very bold diplomacy move and it makes me vulnerable to the next card so uh, David is very eager to play his sword card, uh, so he's going to make his regular move, uh, in this case forward, into the thick of my defenses, uh, and then he's going to make an additional L move. Uh, if he encounters another one of my pawns, he pushes that pawn. Uh, and if he pushes the pawn off of the board edge or into a stronghold, into one of the four corners of a stronghold, he captures that pawn. So he pushes the pawn in the direction of the sword move and then continues his sword move, if there is uh, any movement left to it, uh, and then his turn is over, right? And I am one pawn down. Now, if Luke happened to have a set of one of each type of card, he would be able to recover a pawn, a captured pawn, on his turn and set it back up on his side of the board in an initial setup point. I don't. <laughs> uh, but it would, yeah, it would get set up here. The object of the game is either to set up a stronghold in one of the two back corners of my opponent's side of the board, or for me to have captured all of my opponent's pawns. Either one of those things will win the game. Swords and Strongholds comes with a wooden game board, four mouse pawns per player, an instruction sheet, and a deck of cards. Now to start setup, one player should start shuffling the cards, to get some randomization going while the other player grabs one of each color, hides them in their palm, and offers them to their opponent for choosing. Okay, I'm going to be white and Luke is going to be black. You can set up your four pawns in any configuration on your starting two ranks. So I could set up like this, this is a classic configuration. Starting players seem to like this. David is in the opposite configuration. Uh, my preferred con starting configuration is this kind of reversed wedge. Tend to do well with it. And then once you've chosen your starting configuration, deal three cards to each player. Set up your draw deck. I know you all saw that bottom card. Black begins the game. So on my turn, I move my pawn one space, forward, side to side, backward. In this case, I'm going to go forward. And then when I play the sword card on that, on that pawn, I can move an additional two spaces in an L or hook shape pattern. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use it to try to get a burst of speed, go across the board a little faster, and go one, two. So I'm 
a lot further than where I was when I started. In an instance where I might encounter another pawn, uh, an opponent's pawn or my own pawn, I move my one space, I play sword, and then when I do my L or hook shape pattern, I push the other mouse during that portion of the move. Now, in an instance where that other pawn is close to the board edge, I move one, play sword, and go forward and to the right. The pawn is pushed off the board edge and considered captured. Uh, it is possible to push more than one pawn at a time. In fact, it's possible to push all the pawns at one time. So if I started here and I moved my one and played sword, move forward to the right, and everyone would move in turn until the last pawn fell off the board or ended in an end position. Now the exception is, even though I said I can move my own pawns, if my own pawn was the last pawn, the one that would be affected by going off the board to be captured, I cannot do that. You're not allowed to suicide your own pawns. Now, when moving and playing sword, it is impossible to move a stronghold. You cannot push them. They are a stronghold. They are a fortress. They are impenetrable. In fact, the spaces in the intersections around them are impassable, so I wouldn't even be able to complete the rest of my sword move to get close to push them. If on my turn, when I make my move and play sword, I end up pushing my opponent's pawn into a stronghold, no matter which color the stronghold is, mine or theirs, the mouse's back is up against the wall and considered captured. I make a normal move, play sword, and then make an L-shape sword move to push my opponent's pawn. I can actually push them this way into my stronghold or push them this way into their own stronghold. Either way, the mouse's back is considered up against the stronghold's wall and that pawn is considered captured. All right, so that's the basics of building a stronghold, but there's lots of different things that can happen when you build a stronghold. Namely, so what if uh, David has already occupied the center square uh, with his pawn? I don't have any sword cards or diplomacy cards to play here, um, or maybe I'm saving my sword card for something else. So I'll make my regular move. I'm gonna build a stronghold in one of these two corners, so I'm gonna, or these two squares, so I'm gonna choose this one. So David's pawn is now on a illegal intersection or a, you know, a forbidden <laughs> intersection. Uh, you cannot move along these intersections once there's a stronghold there. So what happens? Well, the first thing that we look at is can David's pawn retreat to... Back towards my side of the board. Back towards his side of the board, right. Uh, and yes, so it can, so the pawn moves back. Pawns always prefer to retreat to their board edge. Uh, when pushed by a stronghold. Yeah, in this case, so if I, if this is a setup, this is a great and, and very effective stronghold move, the way to kind of take back the center. I make my regular move, I build my stronghold here, and then this pawn uh, must retreat, and in this case, it does push back the opposing pawn, uh, the, the additional pawn, rather. You can push multiple pawns with the stronghold. So here, David's already built a stronghold uh, on a previous turn, it's my turn. So I advance, right, I, I advance, I play my stronghold card. Now, David cannot retreat here because this is an illegal square. Uh, does David just get bumped around or, or whatever? No. Does he get captured? No, you cannot capture a pawn with a stronghold, just to remind you. So since he cannot retreat, we look for the second order of operations for stronghold pushing. So the pawn prefers its own board edge, and if it cannot move toward its own board edge, then it will move to the side. It'll squeeze out that way. So, aha, I'm charging forward. David's got a great position here coming forward. Um, I want to stop his attack and kind of jam up this lane. So I'm going to advance to there, and I'm going to build a stronghold here. And I'm going to push David back. Okay, he can't move to uh, to the rear because of this stronghold. Ah, and he also cannot move to the side. Uh, there's And he can't move that way because that's also an illegal square. Uh, illegal intersection, rather. So what happens here? 
the effect is that, in fact, I cannot build a stronghold there. Strongholds are defensive fortifications. They cannot capture uh, a pawn. They cannot force it off the board edge. Therefore, if the pawn that is in the way cannot be pushed back or to the side, then the stronghold cannot be built. Can you move along the same grid square and build a stronghold? Yes. Just simple rule. You can move here and build into your same square. Uh, you're right, you can move here and build into the same square. So strongholds are very flexible like that. What happens when we throw a stronghold into this? So I'm going to move here and I'm going to build a stronghold. Now, I cannot build a stronghold here because this mouse cannot retreat to its own board edge or move away to the side. So that's an illegal square for the stronghold. However, I can build a stronghold here. And by doing so, this mouse must evacuate, it must retreat, and this mouse must move to the corner. By using the stronghold to kind of scatter the field, you can create a lot of interesting strategic opportunities for yourself. You'll notice now this mouse kind of has a free lane to attack while David is sort of jammed up uh, in his own corner. Diplomacy is one of my favorite maneuvers in the game. Uh, it can be uh, very effective. It's also very risky. On my turn, if I want to use diplomacy, I make my regular move, and then I affect the nearest opposing pawn. Play my diplomacy card. In this case, the nearest opposing pawn is one, two squares away. We always count squares, and a mouse is considered to occupy all four squares that it's touching uh, when it is outside of a stronghold. So in this case, I would make my regular move, and we would swap places. If the nearest opposing pawn was a stronghold, or is a stronghold, if the nearest opposing pawn is a stronghold, I make my regular move, play my diplomacy card, one, two, three squares away, this other pawn is one, two, three, four, five squares away, so I affect this pawn, and rather than swapping places, you do not swap places with a stronghold, but I simply talk him out of the stronghold, and I get to choose as the attacker where, uh, which corner, uh, I place the pawn on, all right? So if we have a situation in which there are multiple pawns on the board and I make my move and they're equidistant, so this is one, two, three squares away and one, two, three squares away, this pawn is considered to only occupy uh, its stronghold square, then the attacker chooses. I could choose to remove this pawn from its stronghold or uh, I could choose to swap places with it. To rescue a captured pawn, you must have one of each card in your hand. You turn in your entire hand to the discard pile, you rescue one of your pawns, and place it on the board in one of the initial startup positions that's legal, anywhere on the back two rows. You then draw back up to three cards, and your turn is done. So that's the game. If you've already purchased a copy of Swords and Strongholds, thank you very much. We hope that this video explains the rules with some clarity so that you can have fun playing the game at home. And if you're new to Swords and Strongholds, you can buy the game directly from us at burningwell.com uh, by and clicking the store link. Uh, and if you have further questions about the game, you can ask them on our forums, also to be found at burningwell.com. Thank you very much. Thanks.